Hello, my fellow Endorbers, it's I, Phantom Cheesecake, and I'm back once again. I know it's been a while, but I've been pretty busy with another how to build, and this time it's on my Lego B Drill. Sound effect, engage! <laughs> I haven't seen the review for this guy, I did it quite a while ago and I've just recently got a comment on it asking if I can do a how to build on it. And that is how, if you guys want to see how to build, you do it. You just leave a comment in the video and I will get straight onto it. Now, like the last review I did, I'm going to break this down into several sections so you can just jump to whichever bit you need. So click those boxes that have just appeared on the screen to go to there. But I do recommend you watch the video all the way through just so you know what you're building and every step by step. There is an LDD file in the description down below, you go to my mock pages to get that. Um, but I would recommend watching this video first, give it a like if you are going to use that LDD file. Also, give me some credit if you do use it anywhere in videos, animations, or whatever. And it would be nice just to get some recognition for it. But anyway, on to the first part of the video, which is all the pieces you're going to need to build LEGO Beedrill. And here are all the pieces you're going to need to build your very own LEGO Beedrill. Now, these pieces are fairly common, the ones I used, but the colours on the other hand are not. So you might not be able to find them in the right colours. So if you can't find the pieces you're looking for, there is a link in the description to Pick a Brick. It is a website which is ran by LEGO themselves, so it's official, where you can get all the pieces you need for any LEGO creation I use. Now, onto the first section, which is how to build the arms, legs and the head. Is you're going to need to build the arm, the legs, and the head of B Drill. Now, if you haven't guessed this already, this is a pre recorded audio, which means I can have a drink. Much better. So, first off, we're going to be starting off taking this weird uh, 1x2 hinge piece. Again, I'm using an LDD file to run this, so that's why I keep pausing and we're attaching these slope pieces to the back. I might not do a commentary for every single thing, because it's kind of obvious, but it's nice to have someone talking while you do this. It's relaxing while I find it. I've got a cold as well, so my audio might sound a bit weird. So again, we're attaching this robot hand to this robot claw piece. This is going to make up the leg. This is going to be right or left. There is really no difference apart from where you bend the knee joint. Again, don't stick these pieces down. It takes forever, and I actually cut one of my fingers on this. Oh yeah, sorry about my thumb by the way, I know it looks disgusting, I cut it open on a box. I wear a plaster in the later videos, don't I? We're taking this uh, 1x4, attaching a stud and a 1x2 connecty piece, which attaches to the leg section we made earlier. And that's the entire leg. So now we're, I think I'm going to mirror that now, by making the same piece. Uh, no, I'm actually going to be building the drill bits. So these are his hands, effectively, of B drill. Um, they're meant to be white, so if you want to make them white, make them white. I made them grey, because I don't think I had any white cylinder pieces. And here we are, making the foot and the leg part again. Sorry if you can hear the water, but, you know, I'm ill, so... attaching a 1x2 hinge piece to the back of the knee. This makes the knee articulation. Sort of, actually. Knee. Yeah, it's kind of like a two-stage knee. You've got the rotation part of the knee and the bend part of the knee, which comes from the robot hand arm bit thing. I don't know what their names are. I just make it up as I go along. I know some of their names, not all of them. Technic Pin. I know that name. And a Lego gun, because it looks like a gun attaching the drill bits to the end of that, like so, and then do that again for the other hand thing. But now we're attaching these um, gas the top bit pieces to the other side of the robot hands. This will act as the arm connections to the torso. So like that. And now we're moving on to how to build the head. Now 
We're moving on to the main majority of the yellow pieces in this build. There are no yellow pieces on the wings or the legs or the arms, it's all in the body. So make sure you get all the yellow pieces you have for this. So we're attaching these lantern pieces to the back of a 2x3 at the very back. And the lantern pieces are facing inwards, that's a very key step, don't get that the wrong way around. Yeah, I stuck all this down. I feel like an idiot. Attaching this 2x1 with a 1 stud connector at the top, adding a 1x1 flat tile to the top of that, adding this uh, hinge uh, claw clip piece to the back. That just flushes out the back of the head. You don't actually need that piece if you don't have it, so don't worry. Adding these antenna pieces. And now we're rounding out the back of the head. If you have any improvements to this build, by the way, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Send me a picture of them because I welcome them. This build is very um, fiddly and not very strong. So any improvements, is, I'm open to them. Now we're building the neck and the eye piece. They're kind of one unit. So we're taking these lantern pieces. A lot of these lantern pieces are used in this build. And attaching these claw one by one clip pieces. Adding these one by one translucent tiles. You can have any color of these tiles after the eyes. So if you want to make it personal and have them with blue eyes, green eyes, whatever, just change these. I went with red eyes because I believe they're the ones he has in the anime. I could be completely wrong and they're white. But uh, red is definitely a good contrasting color. There you go, there's the front of his face. Now we're going to be taking that 1x2 tile, attaching it to the back, that holds those pieces together, and then we're attaching it to those lantern bits. And look, it's Beedrill's face! So, now we're going to be taking the neck brace piece, it's a T-joint piece, attaching it to the bottom, and there's the neck. Adjust the ears however you want, and that is how you build the arms, the legs, and the head of Beedrill. Now we're going to be moving on to the abdomen and the torso of him. So. On to the next section. Pause the video here and get all the pieces you'll need to build this section. So first off, we're going to be taking this black lantern piece. There you go, just put it in refocus. And attaching a T-joint to it. Well, it's more of a T-technic piece, but you know, you know the difference. Attaching these one by one clip pieces to the bottom of it. This will form the joint in between the torso and the abdomen. Uh, I'm still very ill. So, also, if you haven't noticed, this is a pre-recorded audio. I don't know if I've mentioned that already, but it is. In case you wonder, we're attaching these one, uh, sorry, these two by four tiles to the back of this one by two uh, double connector bit. Now we're attaching a 1x4 to the bottom of that joint. This forms the bottom of the abdomen. Attaching that lantern piece to one of the sides, like so. Now we're going to be building up the sides, so we're going to be making the rounded abdomen shape that Beedrill is famous for. So it's basically a 1x2 then a 1x2 tile. It's basically how you can think of these next sections. And don't stick your pieces down because they are a nightmare to pull off. That is the biggest warning I will ever give you when I do these reviews or how to builds. Don't do it. Moving on to the back, we're going to be carrying on this black and yellow pattern by adding these 1x1 tiles to the bottom. They're a bit hard to get in, a bit finicky, but just be gentle and they'll go in. And we're going to be doing the same with the yellow version of it. Like so. And we're going to be building up the other side. Now you have a mirror image on both sides. We can fill in the back alternating between black and yellow. Now we're adding these cheese slope pieces and of course the corresponding colours. 
Now, trying to find a lot of these yellow cheese pieces will be very difficult. But, um... You'd be surprised on how many you actually have. If you've ever bought any LEGO City sets and the construction ones, you'll have loads of them because this is where I got mine from. Now we're taking the lantern piece, adding a 1x1 one one tile, adding a 1x2 one connector and a cone piece. That makes the stinger bit at the bottom. If you really wanted to make this a stinger, you could add a sharp object, like um, one of the antenna pieces to the bottom so it looks like a needle or whatever it's called on a bee. But uh, I like to have it flat. Now we're adding 1x3s across the top, so you've got that pattern carrying over. I would recommend using tile pieces actually here, so it's a bit smoother, but I don't own any 1x3 tiles in that colour, so I had to use the stud version. Adding the cheese slopes again to the other side. As you can see, already, we're nearly like two-thirds of the way done with this build. It's super quick, super simple but it looks really cool when it's all together. Just fill in the back bit. Now we're gonna fill in the front with a one by one flat tile in yellow. Now we're gonna be moving on to the torso section. This is how we're gonna connect the legs to the body. Lantern pieces and sideways claw bits. adding some more cheese slopes. Now if you're following the LDD file, which I'm doing right now, you will not use one of those 2x3s. I do make an alteration to it, in which we use all the pieces here. So I recommend using that version because it's a little bit more stable. Adding more lantern pieces to the sides. This is where we attach the arms. Again, adding those cheese slopes to get the cascading body effect. Adding a 1x2 to the back. This is how we connect the wings. Adding a 1x2 brick with a hole in it and a Technic pin. So that will be where the neck joins onto the body. And then finally, we're going to be adding this 1x2 flat tile finish it off. Now like I said, if you follow in the LDD file, this is where you end, but if you're doing my version, we remove some of the tiles, which I'll do in a second I think. We remove some of the tiles and the cheese slopes, so we just take these bits off. Attach the one, uh, two by three, sorry. That makes the body a lot more secure and it's not going to fall apart as easy as it would without it. So I recommend doing it this way around. And then, same pattern again, we just fill it all over. Like so. A lot stronger, a lot more of a beefy body, which I prefer the look of compared to the LDD version, but you know, whichever one you want to do. And that is the abdomen and torso for B drill. Super simple, super easy. Now we're going to be moving on to the wings. And in this section of the video, I'm going to be showing you how we build the wings for B drill. So pause the video here, get all the pieces you're going to need, and let's get building. So if you haven't noticed, I've attached a plaster to my hand because um, it may or may not have started bleeding in between these two takes. We're adding a 2x4 tile, adding a 1x3 slanted tile to the other side, and adding this big 4x4 four four, uh, diagonal cut tile on top of that. The wings are very finicky and they're very artistically done, so really it's however you want to make them. You don't have to follow these steps precisely. This is just one of the best ways of getting a nice wing shape. We're taking this um, L piece, attaching it to that. That is how we're going to be connecting the wings to the back of B-Drill, so it's very important we do that. Now we're going to be mirroring basically what we've done so far on the other side. So again, taking this big um, 4x4 slanted tile, 
adding 2x4s to the bottom to reinforce the connections. And adding a 3x2 slanted tile to that. This um, wing design can also be used for Butterfree if you're making one of them. They have the same wing structure. So uh, if you want to do that, just... Uh... There's a quick cut there because the camera kind of fell off the tripod, so I've just realigned everything. So do not panic. Nothing else has been built. Calm down. Calm, calm down. Good. Back on with the build. See what I mean? Don't stick stuff down. You can't pick it up again. You look like an idiot. Damn you past me! Add this one by one tile in between that section. Add this connector on top of it. It's yellow because it matches the back of his body, but it could be white as well if you wanted to make it flush with the wings. I used yellow for this purpose because you can see the difference. Adding a one by four tile to that, adding these white slant pieces in between the gaps there so the wings got a bit of texture, a bit of depth, and it actually looks like it's coming out the back of his body. Now to the back, we're reinforcing it with adding these 1x4 plates. Plates, panels, I really don't know what the name of them are. So you've got something that looks like that. And that is, uh, I think, most of the top wing done. Now we're just adding some final curves to the top of it. So if we uh, flip this back round. We can add just a little bit more detail. All these pieces are just detailed bits. You don't actually need them. It just adds some nice texture to all the pieces. But it's not all one flat unit. The downside of using this many pieces is it's kind of back heavy. So you will have to build the stand because it can't stand up on its own. I mean, it can, but it will fall over if you breathe on it. So. And now we've done the top bit, we're going to be moving on to the lower section where we'll be taking this weird looking piece, I don't even know how to describe it, and attaching a 2x2 two two flat tile to the top of it. See what I mean? Don't stick stuff down, it will be your downfall. I had to change hands to pick this up. Look, look at me, I'm angry! There we go. So now we've kind of got this weird shape going on. Now look, I'm building quicker because I'm angry. <laughs> so you should end up with this weird shield-like looking thing. Now this is the bottom parts of the wings. Adding another 2 by one tile. Again, this is all just adding texture to the wings. <laughs> Move that last one by 2 tile because you did it wrong. Adding these white cheese slopes, so again, more texture, different levels of wings. Then we clip this onto the back. There is this, it only attaches by a one stud tile, but it's actually quite strong because of the layering effect. And then we're just gonna be mirroring that on the other side. So same build, just in reverse. Well, mirrored. Don't drop any pieces either. Especially on the floor, you'll never find them. I did that in the middle of a Green Lantern review. I dropped one of the green studs. I still haven't found it, and it's been, what, four weeks? It's somewhere. Just can't find it. Adding some more cheese slopes and this 1x2 one, one stud connector. Again, they're not really important, just adds a nice bit of decoration to the whole build. And then we attach that to the other side of the wing, make sure you get in the right place. And you get this really, really nice looking wing. So now we're going to be moving on to the stand and base of the build. This bit is optional, but I do recommend you do it, otherwise he will fall over. And in this section of the video, I'm going to be telling you how to build the base and the stand for B-Drill. So here are all the pieces you're going to need. So pause the video here and arrange all the bits you're going to need. You also don't forget this really big base piece. It's 12 by 12 studs wide. So it's going to be hard to find. You might have to make your own version, but don't worry. My LDD file sorts that whole thing out for you. Now, on with the build. 
So the first thing, we're going to be taking the 12 by 12 plate, as you can see here, it's pretty big, and we're going to be building the black outline for the pixel art of the Pokeball. So we're going to be just building it out outwards, and then we're going to be working inwards with the colour. It's good to start out with these 1x4s in all the corners that we're going to be using them. Now, this is the one bit where I don't use a 1x4, so be careful here. I use a L piece and a one and a two by two, uh, sorry, two by one plate. Now we're building it up in a circle pattern. So if you're ever wondering how you do circles in Lego, this is how you do it. Super simple. Are we going to be doing that the whole way around the circle? This is my second attempt at doing pixel art. The first time I ever did one, you can look at my mock pages at it's Aborigine Art. I did that on a whim. Um, have a look at it, it's weird. I'm gonna say it's really weird, but it's, it kinda of looks cool. Anyway, taking these one by three pieces to create the dip at the front of the Pokeball. Now I make a mistake here, and I will realize that in about, oh, a second or two. So, yep. Yeah. No, that looks wrong. Where have I made the mistake? Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I timed that. Again, pre-record, so I can make fun of myself in the past. That reminds me. Water. Now we're going to fill in that gap with some 1x1 one one tiles. You can make these out of flat tiles if you wanted. I think it would actually look a lot better, but... Um, again, I don't own that many flat tiles, so again, I'm using the stud version, which has its benefits. You can actually stick things to it. We're going to be adding these really bright red sections. They come out pink, sort of, ish. So now we're just filling in the Pokeball with all the colors you'll need. You can fill these in with any pieces in any order. I'm just doing it with the pieces I had available. You can change the design of this Pokeball so it can look like any of the Pokeballs from the game. So you can make a Master Ball, an Ultra Ball. In fact, or if you do make this build yourself and make some alteration to it, send me a picture of it on my Twitter. My Twitter is in the description down below. And with this final stud, that is the Pokeball bit done. That's your base plate. And it actually looks like one, the original 8-bit version. Now we're moving on to the stand. Now the stand is just a stand. There's nothing important about it. It works, it's functional, it's just strong enough to hold b -Drill. When I say that, I mean just. So I would recommend making some improvements to this design. It's a little bit stronger, but it works for me. So, uh, but it works for me. So make your own alterations where needed. Taking this one by two, um, brick with a hole in it, attaching a 1x2 connector piece with one stud connection, and attaching the whole stand to the very top of the Pokeball, like so. And it's very big and doesn't fit in shot. And in the next section we're going to be taking all the pieces we built previously, putting them all together to build B-Drill. So on to the next section. Now in this section of the video we're going to be putting all the pieces that we've just built all together. So we're going to be taking the torso and we're going to be slamming the head right on into that little piece we made earlier. And already he's coming together, adding the drill bit hands and arms to either side of his body, like so. Position them however you want, you might want to get them out of the way for the legs, attaching the legs to the clip pieces. You might have to fiddle around with the connections a bit because sometimes you might push the claw hands too far into the arm so the legs can't be connected so be careful now we're going to be adding the wings if we flip this guy over we can see that the 1x2 stud thing we added earlier can attach to the L piece on the wings nice and securely now we're going to be attaching the wings to the stand so just tip the camera up a bit now we're attaching the stud hole to the L piece on the back of the wings, making sure the connection is there. And now we can position B drill however we want, spread out the legs a bit more, raise the hands, move the wings a bit, tilt the head, 
And that is Lego B Drill. That is everything you need to do. Now, if you want to make this guy yourself, there is an LDD file down in the description down below. If you make any changes to this guy, leave a comment down below, tell me how you did it, or send me a picture of it on Twitter, my Twitter is also in the description down below, and of course, if you don't have any of these pieces, Pick a Brick is also down there as well. So, I'd like to thank you all for watching, I've been Fam Cheesecake, you've been the audience, if you've got any more improvements or suggestions, or things I should build next time, leave it in a comment down below, and I'll see you all in another video. Outro music, engage!